great start this morning. Number 182 in your books, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Number 182, we'll sing all three verses this morning. Number 182, God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus. Lift it up on that first verse now. God sent His Son. Vibrant Warriors, welcome to our online 2022 January program. I trust you had a good Christmas season. As always, we have a good program lined up today. So sit, relax, sing along with us, exercise, try out the quiz, and hear God's word spoken to us through Pastor Sean. So before we start, let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have given us. Though we are online, Father, we just thank you that we can all gather together as your children so we can spend time together in your word. Lord God, we just uh, thank you for... 2020 and 2021 where we went through a pandemic father and through it all we thank you Lord 
that you kept us safe. Thank you, Father, for our pastors. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Pastor uh, Roger and uh, Therese safely back to Sri Lanka. Thank you for our Pastor Sean and Tammy. Thank you, Lord, for our Singular and Tamil pastors and our outstation pastors as they uh, work, Lord, to bring your word to others. Father God, we just thank you and ask you that you will protect us today and all the days to come. Help us, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Help us, Lord, to be a blessing to others. We ask all of this in your precious name. Amen.
to multiply trials his multiplied peace. his love has no limits his grace has no measure his power has no boundary
Anything we can give by your plan That's just the way it is And you are God alone From before time
Hello everyone. We are sorry that we can't meet still physically, but it's a new year. Let's look forward to good things this year. And we hope that you are all safe and well. It's important that you follow the guidelines and stick to all the restrictions. As you know, this part of the program is to help us to think about things, maybe things you learned. This is a, this is a quiz, actually. It's going to come up on the overhead in a while, but it's to help us to think about uh, things that we may have learned a long time ago. But don't worry if you don't know the answers, because it's also an opportunity to learn something new. And it's so important to keep our minds active during this uh, lockdown time, during this time of restrictions because otherwise our brains also go into lockdown. So let's uh, have a look at this quiz and see how we fare. The questions are as follows. The first one is, what is the Italian word for pie? What is the Italian word for pie? You can write your answer. You don't need a lot of time. That's easy. Second one, by what title is the Bishop of Rome known as? By what title is the Bishop of Rome known as? Number three, who wrote The Wind in the Willows? That's a book that you may have read. Try to see if you can remember who wrote The Wind in the Willows. Four, what does a frogman wear on his feet? What does a frogman wear on his feet? Try to think of that. Next one, what is the name of the sweet liquid collected by the bees? What is the name of the sweet liquid collected by the bees? Next one, what three-letter word is the name of a fox's home? The place where a fox lives, what is the three-letter word? Actually, it's also a lion's home, so that makes it easier for you, I think. Do reptiles have cold or warm blood is the next question. You have to answer, is it cold blood or warm blood that reptiles have? Next one, what sea creature has three hearts and eight arms? I'm sure you've uh, read about it or heard about it. A sea creature that has three hearts and eight arms. Next one. Name the largest member of the cat family. Family of cats, there is one large one which, is, uh, which we know about. The largest member. Next one. How many humps does a Bactrian camel have? We know the normal camel, but this is a Bactrian camel. How many humps does it have? Next. Nag is a slang word for what animal? You use the word nag as a slang word for a certain animal. Next, in the nursery rhyme, sorry, there's a spelling mistake. In the nursery rhyme, who lost her sheep? Who lost her sheep? Next, what type of food is cockaleeky? Kokaliki is a type of food. What sort of food? What sort of food is it? And then, in what year did World War II start? In what year did World War II start? And the last one, which British queen died in 1901? 1901, who was the British, British queen who died that year? Okay, hopefully that didn't take too long. You either know it or maybe you have to recollect. But hopefully you've written your answers and the answers will come up on the board now. Okay, I think that gives you enough time. The answers. The Italian word for pie is pizza. We all know about pizza. That is the Italian pie. The title of the Bishop of, the, of Rome is the Pope. The Wind in the Willows was written by Kenneth Graham. The frogman wears flippers on his feet. You've seen them, I'm sure. 
The name of the sweet liquid collected by the bees is nectar, N-E-C-T-A-R, nectar. The three-letter word, that's the name of a fox's home, is a den, D-E-N. Reptiles have cold blood, right? Reptiles are cold-blooded creatures. The sea creature that has three hearts and eight arms is the octopus. I'm sure you got that. The largest member of the cat family is the tiger. Okay, that was easy. A Bactrian camel has two humps. Nag is a slang word for a horse. In the nursery rhyme, it was little Bo Peep who lost her sheep. Do you remember that? I'm sure you do. Kokaliki is a type of soup, S-O-U-P. World War II started in 1939, and the British Queen who died in 1901 was Queen Victoria. Now, as I said, don't worry, you may not have got many answers, but you have learned something, so try to store up information, read and get information, keep your brains active, and I hope you will continue to do your best always. Thank you so much for being with us this day. God bless you all. People often say to me, they say, J. John, you know, what, what do you do? And it's always very difficult to know what to say. Because if I say to you that I'm a reverend, which I am, that conjures up certain images in people's minds as to what I might be. <laughs> so I like to be a little bit creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an aeroplane at Heathrow Airport and I said, hello. And she said, oh, hello. And I said, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. Then she said, what do you do? And I said, well, <laughs> I work for a global enterprise. She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. <laughs> she said, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got hospitals and hospices and homeless shelters. I said, we do marriage work. We've got orphanages. We've got feeding programs, educational programs. I said, we do all sorts of justice and reconciliation things. I said, basically, we look after people from birth to death <laughs> and we deal in the area of behavioural alteration. <laughs> She went, wow! <laughs> and it was so loud, her wow, loads of people turned around and looked at us. She says, what's it called? <laughs> I said, it's called the church. <laughs> <laughs> If we are a follower of Jesus, wow. then we are part of a global Absolutely. enterprise. But not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone before us. Wow. <laughs> we have to start every exercise session with a warm up. Now, normally I would use some really nice, jolly music for this, something bright, but I'm unable to use it here, so I hope you can pick up something at home. So we're going to start off slowly, just working on the spot, gradually building up. Then we'll bring the arms in. How are you doing? I hope you've got more space than me. Then take the arms forward, all the time keeping the feet in action. Then we'll take one up. That's good. And the other side. How are you doing? Now we're going to do a step to the side, step to the side, step to the side, step to the side. Keep stepping, keep everything moving, and now we're going to add the arms. Step, tap, step, tap, tap, step, tap, step, tap, and back to the beginning. I'm walking on the spot. Now I use the arms. And the arms a bit more. And overhead, 
one at a time. And the other arm. Golly, this is not good without music, is it? Normally our classes have lovely music that's suitable for our age group. Keep the feet and ankles working and build it up using the arms as well. Let's walk again and this time we're going to point the toe. Point the toe, point the toe, point the toe. Stretch the heel, stretch the heel, stretch the heel, stretch the heel. Start again. How are you doing? Is your heart beginning to go a bit? Don't overdo it. Remember we're over 70. We tell us we're at risk. And bringing the arms in higher up. And overhead. And the other one. Remember to keep using your feet. Step, tap, step, tap, step, tap, step, tap. Add the arms, add the arms. Now we're going back to the one in front, pointing the toe and point. Point, 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 and the heels. Off we go again. Are you still with me? All the time, building this up slowly and carefully, keeping everything moving. I hope, of course, you've checked everything round about you so you don't collide with anything. I've checked this lamp because there's every chance I'll give it a good belt and knock it over. Step to the right, step, tap, step, tap. And let's go forwards, toes, toes, toes. I hope you're enjoying this, heels. Well, it's better than sitting watching all that blinking, depressing BBC news. Right, let's think that we've now warmed up. And what we're going to do next, we're going to rearrange our body so that we're in the right position to start exercising. Good posture starts with foot placement, two feet parallel, even weight distribution and just bend the knees to feel the whole footprint as if you were standing in the sand on the beach, if only. Check that your feet are evenly placed. Check your pelvis is the right angle. Pull in all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Reach the rib cage, press the heel down and release. Reach the rib cage, press the heel down and release. Release the shoulders couple of times position the head now we're going to a good morning to all our vibrant warriors and you know even as this is the first vibrant warriors online meeting or the meeting for the year we want to wish all of you at the vibrant warriors a wonderful blessed glorious victorious 2022 and may you and your families be blessed in every way and may God's greatness, his grace and his power shine through your lives than ever before as you have stepped in to 2022. You know, our theme here at the Colombo Gospel Tab for 2022 is Jesus for everyone based on Luke chapter 10 verse 47. And I want to encourage every one of you that are watching, it doesn't matter what your walk of life is, no matter what your status in life is, no matter where you may be at in life right now, I want you to know Jesus is for you. Jesus is for every person. He loves us irrespective of where we've come from, what we've done, and where we are at at this very, very moment. And I want to share with you, you know, as we start out the Vibrant Warriors meeting for this year, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, reading from verse 18 down to verse 19. And it says this, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, Jesus here begins to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. And in fact, a few verses below this, you know, Jesus mentions by saying, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Because Jesus was the fulfillment or is the fulfillment of Isaiah 61. Now, Isaiah 61 begins to describe what type of a ministry the Messiah will bring about in the lives of different people. And you find here different
different categories and different groups of people mentioning to, uh, mentioned to us, even revealing further from the Gospel of Luke in these verses how true it is that Jesus is for everyone. No matter what season you are in, situation you are in, whatever need you are going through, Jesus is for every person. And we see how Jesus is the answer for every person and the answer to every situation and season that every person is in. In. And we see how the Bible speaks to us and Jesus reads out from the book of Isaiah and says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me and he has anointed me. Even as you have stepped into 2022, I want to encourage you. I want to assure you that God's spirit is upon each and every one of us. Just as God had a mission and a purpose for Jesus, for his life, as he came down from heaven to earth, God has a purpose and a mission for your life and for my life. And it says here that Jesus was anointed by the Spirit of God. And we pray that 2022 would be a year that you would be anointed in a very powerful way, in a very fresh manner by the Holy Spirit so you can experience Jesus in everything and you can share Jesus with everyone as well. Because remember, Jesus is for everyone. Would you that comments type saying, Jesus for everyone. And it says here that Jesus was anointed. That word anointed means he was set apart. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit, you know, to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. So you got to understand that Jesus came to bring the good news, that he came to die for every person. He came to bring the good news of the gospel because the gospel is good news. And here it says, the good news to the poor, to preach glad tidings to the poor, to preach good news to those who are poor. Now, those who are poor here are not just talking about those who are poor where wealth and materialism is concerned, but those who are poor here are those who are humble in their spirit, those who need, who see a need for forgiveness, a need for a savior, and you know, who wants their sins forgiven, and they want their lives changed and transformed. And Jesus said that he was anointed to preach the good news of what? That he is the savior, he is the Messiah, and that he is the one who can forgive people's sin and make people right with God. And so here, the poor means poor in spirit, a humble spirit, to preach good news to those who are willing to depend on God, to have a dependency on God. And I want to encourage you today, when you are humble, God is able to break through into whatever situation. And when we are humble and depend on God, we can experience Jesus in every situation. And it goes on to say, to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. I want you to know that, you know, every one of us go through heartache and pain. You know, when people do things and say things in our lives, our hearts are broken, we feel let down, we feel rejected, we feel betrayed. And you know, in those moments, every one of us go through heartache. Every one of us go through a broken heart. And you know what? Jesus came to the broken hearted. Maybe as you're watching, maybe you are, you are hurting. Maybe you've been hurt by a family member, a friend, or someone around you. Maybe someone said something and did something. Or maybe, you know, you feel rejected by someone and you feel let down by someone. And in those moments, we all go through heartache and pain. Every one of us, including myself, we all go through heartache and pain. And here's the good news. Jesus came to heal the broken hearted. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit to heal our broken hearts. And today, if your heart is aching, because of something that you have been through, because of something that someone has said, I want you to know only Jesus can heal your break, broken heart. Only Jesus can heal your aching heart. Would you bring your hurt to Jesus? Would you bring your ache to Jesus? Would you bring the broken pieces of your heart to Jesus and ask him to heal you? And it goes on to say, you know, he also, he was sent to heal the brokenhearted, and to proclaim liberty to the captives. Not only did Jesus come to preach good news, saying there is hope, there is salvation, there is forgiveness. Not only did Jesus come to those who are brokenhearted, but he came to those of us who are captives. You know, sometimes we can feel captive 
in our situation. We can feel imprisoned in the thoughts of our mind. We can feel imprisoned by different things. And Jesus came to proclaim, Jesus came to declare that there is freedom. There is freedom, there is victory from those things that can hold us down. Sometimes we can be kept, taken captive by fear, you know, taken captive by depression taken captive by loneliness, taken captive by rejection, taken captive by a low self-esteem. You know, I want to encourage you today. You know, no matter what your captivity is, there is freedom in Jesus. The Bible says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so Jesus came to set the captives free. And it goes on to say, and recovery of sight to the blind. And this again here is not to just give sight to those who are physically blind, you know, but to give sight to those who are spiritually blind. And sometimes when, when things happen in our life, sometimes situations and circumstances can blur our vision, can blind our vision. And sometimes we can lose the very vision and the purpose of our life because of the different situations and circumstances we go through. Only Jesus can renew even vision in our life, renew the very purpose for our life, renew vision in our life for which he created us to live. And maybe today you had dreams shattered. You had your vision lost, you know, and you lost the vision in living. And I want to encourage you today to ask Jesus to help you and to renew your vision. Say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, you know, so that I can see the things that I don't see. You see, Jesus wants to open our eyes towards the great things that he has in store for us. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no heart has been able to understand, no mind has been able to conceive what God has in store for those who love him and to those whom he loves. And so I just want to encourage us. Sometimes we need God to, to open our vision to see the wonderful things that he has prepared for each and every one of us. Don't let your situation and your setbacks blur the vision of your life from seeing what God has prepared for you to from seeing what God has purpose and plan for your life every step of the way. And you know, he also came to open the spiritually blinded eyes. The spiritually blinded eyes. Every one of us were once spiritually blind. We were blind to our sin. We were blind to our stubbornness. We were blind to our stiff neckedness. And you know what? Jesus came to open the eyes of the spiritually blind to see if we were blind in see, not seeing that we were sinners in need of a savior. And you know, that's why that amazing song, that amazing hymn of all ages is so powerful even today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I want you to know, you know, Jesus came to open the spiritual eyes. Also, he's the God who opened blinded eyes. We see from the story of blind Bartimaeus, you know, how Jesus, you know, there is no miracle that he cannot do. And he's a God who gives recovery of sight even to the blind. And so I want to encourage you, whether you have lost your vision for living, your purpose for living, whether you need a healing touch of the Lord where your eyesight is concerned or any other physical area where you need a healing touch of the Lord, I want you to know He's a miraculous God. He's a supernatural God who has come to bring healing to every one of us internally, externally, and you know to recover the sight of blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You know, in this past year or more, there are a lot of things that have oppressed us, weighed us down, burdened us. You know, fear of the future, fear of sickness and disease and death that has overwhelmed nations around and people around. And it says here that he wants to set at liberty, again, he wants to set free anything that oppresses us, anything that holds us down, anything that binds us. That's what the word oppression means. Anything that holds you down and binds you and keeps your life stagnant. I want you to know Jesus is our freedom and he has come to set every one of us free. And he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is to proclaim that it is the year of God's redemption. It is the year of God's salvation. And I want to speak over 
every one of you vibrant warriors. We love you and we want to declare God's very best over you. We pray and declare that this is the year, the acceptable year of the Lord's favor over your life where you experience his love, his power, his forgiveness, his deliverance, his healing, his redemption in your life and that whatever even you need God to restore, you would see the Lord Jesus who is for everyone restoring everything even that has been lost and broken in your life. See, so Jesus is for the poor. Jesus is for the brokenhearted. Jesus is for the captives. Jesus is for those who are blind. Jesus is for those who are oppressed. And he came to proclaim that he is the answer and he is the one who can bring true deliverance and lasting redemption from your life and my life every step of the way. And we just want to speak that over you and we pray God's very best over your life. Let me pray for you right now. So dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that this is the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. A year where you want to bring your forgiveness your salvation, your healing, your deliverance, your freedom in the lives of every one of us. And Lord, you love every vibrant warrior who have connected online and even those who are unable to connect. And I pray just where they are, they would experience your forgiveness, Lord. They would experience your healing touch. They would experience your deliverance. They would experience the freedom that comes from you. And whatever things that are weighing them down, holding them down, whatever things that have blurred their vision, even at this age for their life. I pray you would open their eyes, even like Caleb to see, there, are, there is still a mountain for me to conquer. And that they would have the courage to say, Lord, give me my mountain. I will take the mountain that the Lord has set for me. And you would, Lord, infuse strength, renew strength and courage and confidence and faith and peace and comfort over everyone, Lord Jesus. I speak your blessing over each and every one of them. May they experience healing in every area they need healing. Freedom in the areas they need to experience freedom. Thank you, Lord, that you are for everyone and thank you for your word that reveals that to us more and more and more. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And so we have come to the end of another Vibrant Warriors program. Let me tell you that we will be meeting again next month on the 16th. So keep 16th February in mind and please contact us. Also, if you need prayer during the course of the month, you have the... You have the details of some of the people there. Please contact one of them and they'll be only too glad to pray with you. Now, many have had their birthdays at, in January so far and there are some more who have to celebrate it till the end of the month. So now we are going to pray for them and we're also going to pray for all of you. Please join us. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that you have given us today. Thank you for enabling us, Lord, to meet your children virtually today, Father. Lord, we pray that your hand will be upon every one of them. Thank you for those who have already celebrated their birthdays. Bless them abundantly. Give them good health and strength. Father, if they have any anxiety, Lord, I pray that you will remove it in Jesus' name and fill them with your hope, Lord. Be with the ones who are going to celebrate their birthdays during the course of the month, Lord. Father, I pray that your hand will continue to lead them and guide them. Thank you, Lord, for all what you have done for us. And we commit ourselves into your precious hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Should nothing of our efforts and no legacy survive Unless the Lord does raise the house in vain its builders strive To you who boast tomorrow's gain, tell me what is your Oh, God.
to cry.